The manufacturing line was just purchased by Saudi Arabia for $200 million. A few days ago, the six-day Zhuhai Air Show in China came to a conclusion. The entire number of transactions reached $39.08 billion, more than double that of the prior year, with a record $12.05 billion among them. The Middle East reached via Saudi Arabia is the most unexpected. Saudi Arabia is spending $200 million to purchase a whole production line in addition to the 300 drones it acquired for this air show. The 14th air show China recently came to a spectacular conclusion in Zhuhai. Throughout 740 firms from 43 different nations and regions participated in the event over the course of the six days. Over 200 people attended the aircraft signing events, which had 121 exhibitors. There were 549 transaction models in all. In addition, this year's air show saw the debut of 55 displays, and in contrast to last year's air show record of 12 took center stage. A record-breaking amount of $39.08 billion in signings occurred at this year's air show, more than double from the previous year. Saudi Arabia, a Middle Eastern nation, had the most stunning purchasers at this air show. According to reports, Saudi Arabia performed a crazy sweep during this air show. The Saudi side purchased $1.03 billion worth of laser weapon systems in addition to purchasing the 120 old Scorpion production line for $200 million on the current public route. Saudi Arabia further purchased 300 Rainbow 4B attack drones. Orders totaled close to $4 billion. This year's air show witnessed a record number of signings, which is not without cause. To demonstrate to the world China's most recent accomplishments and technological advances over the last year, the national team of China developed a variety of new goods and technology. The Chinese J-10 fighter plane performed a variety of exhilarating maneuvers during the air show, which featured a more powerful specification and lineup. 20 landed on location for the first time and demonstrated double hedging, a single horizontal roll and other maneuvers in a four-plane diamond configuration, allowing the audience a chance to observe it up close. In actuality, Saudi Arabia had purchased weaponry and equipment built in China before as an energy superpower in the Middle East during the 1980s. Saudi Arabia derived most of its riches from its natural resources, but this also made it a target for many of its neighbors. Iraq dominated Saudi Arabia at the time in terms of military might and equipment. Saudi oil ships were frequently attacked as a result of the ongoing threat from surrounding nations. To maintain its own security, Saudi Arabia has to buy weaponry from foreign nations. There is a severe lack of missile technology in the Middle East. The only countries with the ability to export are China, the United States, and the Soviet Union. At the end, Saudi Arabia decided to buy 35 Dong from China for three missiles in the 2014 Saudi military show. The Saudi side released a photo of the sunrise taken by three missiles for the first time. Three missiles from this batch were shipped to Saudi Arabia. Despite being limited to a range of 3,000 kilometers, it was sufficient to cover all of Israel and Iran, providing Saudi Arabia the assurance it needed to protect its own security. Saudi Arabia has also purchased several drones, 17 anti-aircraft missiles, Chinese red flags, and is now the country that purchases the most Chinese drone. According to reports, the Chinese exhibitors have TASF. 31 Falcon fighter aircraft caught the Saudi Crown Prince's attention at an air defense display in March of last year. According to sources, the Saudi government has started to market its desire to buy fighter plane. The Chinese side is eager to offer it as well. According to Saudi Foreign Minister Al Jubeir, Saudi Arabia's main trading partner is now China. Saudi Arabia aims to prioritize regional security, commerce, and climate concerns for more in-depth interactions when the heads of state meet in the future. Both China and Saudi Arabia have significant stakes in one another. These Saudi actions are notable from its ambition to join the BRICS group to its attempt to talk about regional security. Saudi Arabia and other Gulf nations have traditionally seen the United States as their lone regional security ally. However, as tensions with the U.S. have increased, Saudi Arabia has started to intentionally collaborate across disciplines with China, which suggests that both U.S. dominance is declining and that we can play a bigger role in the Middle East. Israel was first seen as the Middle East's biggest security danger by Saudi Arabia. The Sunnis, headed by Saudi Arabia, and the Shiites, led by Iran, are presently engaged in a bloody conflict in Yemen. The main reason why the United States wants to destabilize the Middle East is likewise this. Just a Middle East in disarray. The Gulf oil producing nations will collaborate closely with the U.S. to promote regional security, who will pay attention to the Americans if there is peace in the Middle East. 
However, the U.S. is too smug to disregard Saudi Arabia's and other oil-producing nations' interests, which is a major reason why Saudi Arabia and the U.S. started centrifuging in terms of regional security, China and Saudi Arabia must work together more closely. One of the few nations in the world today with a real monarchical feudal structure is Saudi Arabia. The young crown prince is essentially in charge of Saudi Arabia and is the only person who has the authority to make all Saudi decisions after the old Salman transferred power to the young Salman due to health concerns. However, the young politician has ambition and an iron grip that his father lacked. In a contemporary spin on a judicial power struggle, Salman Jr. was able to gradually seize control of the nation by waging merciless war against his relative. He implemented a number of changes after seizing power in an effort to transform Saudi Arabia into a contemporary, typical nation that would always be wealthy. Despite the fact that Saudi Arabia was a feudal royal kingdom, young Salman Jr. had modern view. He worked towards secularization, promoted enlightened thought across the nation, increased the influence of women, developed special economic zones, and adopted an open economic strategy. Salman Jr. wants Saudi Arabia to replace London as the region's and the world's financial hub so that the country may continue to prosper, even if the oil runs out. Salman Jr. has demonstrated outstanding social skills in the diplomatic setting in addition to his domestic political and economic machinations. His methods of diplomacy are direct and blunt. His interactions with powerful entities are understated. Additionally, he has proven to be quite adept at navigating the difficulties of his Middle Eastern neighbors. During the Trump administration, he also forged strong friendships with the Trump family, which aided in the rapprochement between the United States and Saudi Arabia. Salman Jr. is in command of OPEC the dominant force in the Middle East, and enjoys positive diplomatic ties with both China and Russia, as well as the West. The only issue is that it would cost a lot of money to create a financial hub out of nothing. Saudi Arabia, too. Oil is presently his major source of income. Salman Jr. despises those who attempt to stifle oil's conversion into affordable energy, as well as his plans to carry out the various tasks he has in mind. Oil must cost somewhere in the neighborhood of $79 a barrel. However, the oil industry has been severely impacted since 2020 by the global supply chain recession brought on by the epidemic. Salman Jr. did not think twice to take a position in favor of his interests when the conflict between Russia and Ukraine increased oil prices. Biden, who has called himself a pariah and is a person with human rights issues, has a bad relationship with Salman Jr., Salman Jr. is hesitant to even make the most basic facial expressions. When Biden traveled to Saudi Arabia in July to press for an increase in oil production, Salman Jr. and Biden played tit for. As a result, Biden pounced on the opportunity when only a symbolic increase in production occurred, failing to meet American demands and putting the United States in a confrontation with Russia to drive oil prices below $80. After turning around and rushing to cooperate, Saudi Arabia adopted the November proposals from Asian and oil exporting nations to jointly reduce production by 2 million barrels per day. The price of crude oil in New York has risen to over $80 again in the past two days, and production has decreased by 2 million barrels, almost entirely due to Saudi Arabia. Biden is even more incensed by the Saudis' assurance to China that their oil exports would continue unaffected by the production cut after they received the order to do so. The two million barrels of crude oil will ultimately be paid for by the United States European allies. This is the end of this video, but I'll tell you about one more news. China shocked the world completely and just pushed back Yuzo, becoming top one in space technology. What's the new technology? Click on this video.